Hello. In this video, I'm going to show you how to create a spine leaf network with OpenBSD. OpenBSD is one of the most secure operating systems on the internet. Originally developed by Theodore Roth, continued development, and this Canadian distribution has been really making a statement with a solid rock, uh, not only for the most secure operating system, but also with some open SSH, open BGPD implementations, and uh, some other clients, RPKI. In this case, I like to take the time to complement some previous video performed with the spine leaf with Cisco routers using the Cisco packet tracer. But in this case, the idea will be to simulate the similar architecture, spine leaf, understanding it on top of the layers going to be the two spines not talking each other connecting two leaves which is going to be the three open BSD routers ultimately giving us a gateway to some other one that I simulate as the eight so with all that said let's go ahead and get started spine leaf is part of the closed network some uh, architecture designed for telecommunications originally designed for uh, voice switching circuits uh, Charles closed back in 19 52 is when actually start working with this concept. Now it's been evolving with a new networking in terms of the spine leaf for all data centers. Uh, basically, we're going to be using real hardware, in this case, like the, like the um, BSD parts on the top and bottom. And this can actually be used and represented ultimately to simulate a real case scenario. If you want to put a spine leaf, of course, you can actually go ahead and purchase your routers that support all the respective uh, BGP protocols and get this working. Or you can get some of those things, appliances that you can install OpenBSD. Installation of OpenBSD is going to be covered in this video. I will not go through that. But the, the idea is going to be whatever is your requirements, you can actually uh, purchase real hardware. I suggest at least four network cards because I'm simulating the local loopback address. Uh, but you can actually connect it ultimately to your network for high resilience, high availability, spine leaf design, and eventually some of these devices eventually happen to have a problem like hardware or memory, you can actually replace with the confidence that your network will continue working. So let's go ahead and get started. Uh, this video is being recorded with a portable version of ShareX. With all this out of the way, uh, let's go ahead and get started. I'm not going to save this. And... This is actually the previous design. We have uh, two Cisco routers. I want to put the links on the video from one to two, left to right, top to bottom, uh, rows one, two, and three. Uh, this is uh, one, 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 two, 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 local loopback three, four, five, respectfully, and eight, simulating as a local loopback interfaces. Same thing is going to be in OpenBSD. From top to bottom, the span leaf is going to be from 1 to 1. It's going to be the 11, 192, 168. It's actually a typo here. 11, 192, 168, 12, 1 to 2. And 1 to 2, respectfully, is going to be 1 to 3, like 13. When it's 2, it's to the 2 to 1. It's going to be 21, 22, 23. That's going to be the slash studies connectivity between the spine and leaves. Notice the spines, they don't talk each other. They're going to go through the leaves. The leaves actually going to be respectfully connected to the to the spines and also going to be cascading from there the connection to the local loopback 8888 in one of the interfaces the three interfaces so three interfaces going to be added on this hardware again this was the previous video i'm not going to go ahead and use this one what we want to do is actually simulate this one using oracle virtual box so let's go ahead and get started i want to start with the first machine i want to call it openbsd spine one and I want to select my VM. Previously, I downloaded uh, the VSD ISO image. And it's going to be on hardware. I want to use uh, one gig of RAM, one CPU. That's fine. Uh, I just need four gigs of RAM, really. The operating system is very lean. I don't need more. And uh, the other thing that I'd like to take a look here is the network. The network is going to be actually not using the net. I want to use the internal network and I want to simulate uh, by subnetting the connectivity between all the boxes. So I want to say uh, the other part is going to be internal uh, network. 
and the internal network is going to be in promiscuous mode for Ethernet 2. I want to put the respective subnets, and that's how I want to separate the connectivity from the internal network, and it's going to be allowed all. That way, we have three adapters for the connectivity, all in internal network, that's fine, and all in uh, promiscuous mode, and that's it. With all that said, I can go ahead and get started. The Spine 1 installation of OpenBSD. And for this installation, what I'm going to do is I'm going to expand the um, uh, view of the, the default view of uh, the VM. Typically, it's going to be show here, but for the scope of the video, I want to expand the view to 150%, so it be more readable for the user. The, settings that we're going to be using are going to be based on the settings here just like it was described earlier so uh, let's go ahead and carry on with this um, it's going to be an installation yes and it's going to be the default keyboard is fine my system was this is not connected to the internet so it's going to be just a spine one uh, the network interface em0 uh, that's fine I want to put an IP address. In this case, uh, because we're starting on the spine one, the spine one should obey to, let me this, take this one here, put it at the bottom, uh, let me go back here to my spine one. There we go. <clears throat> right now, the IP address, let's go to respectfully, is 192.168. That 11, that one. My mass is going to be slash 30, so it's going to be 255, that 255, that 255, that 252. Uh, IP address, no, we're not using IPv6. Uh, we want to continue to EM1, and this is going to be uh, IP address 192, 168, um, that 12, that one, and this is slash 30. And here we go. Uh, IPv6 none. Let's continue to EM2. And that's one of your signal link hosts. Yes, and the IP address is 192.168.13.1. And it's going to be another 30. 255.255.255.252. And finally, not at not. Uh, we're done with the network card. Uh, no no uh, default route. No, this is not the file gateway at this time. Localhost, that's fine. That's a domain. The DNS name servers. Uh, I don't need any domain name servers, so none. It's fine. Uh, password for root. Okay, my super password for root. Start SSH. Yes, I want to start SSH. No, I don't want X. Uh, no, I don't want to create a user. Yes, absolutely. Uh, low root. No, no, no. We don't want to. We never want to low root SSH login. I have a problem with Ansible, but anyway, uh, no, no SS, no root SSH. Uh, encrypt, no, I don't need to encrypt, this is just a lab. Uh, this WSD0, the whole drive, yeah, that's fine, the default is fine. The sets are on CD0, 386. Uh, I want to, no, let's remove everything. And let's just include only the BSD part. Just everything on the left. As you can see, it gets a lot nicer, just the VSD, VSDRD, and the base. I think that will be perfectly fine. Yes, I want to continue with verification. And this, folks, was just about everything you need to install OpenBSD. I know we're about eight minutes on the video, but uh, the installation took about two, three minutes. You, that's how easy you can install once you download your ISO, OpenBSD, super lean, super small, super fast. As soon as this finishes, it's going to be the bare minimum. Uh, I like to do some tweakings for the scope of our video because this is going to be the template we're going to be using to build the spinal leaf. We're going to be doing checks like the host name, like the hosts. We're going to be checks like the um, uh, netmax, the local loopback address. We're going to be enabling open BGPD. We want to be enabling routing. We want to actually control it and make it, everything starts at boot start. We want to configure BGP, and we want to start uh, advertising once we get there. Once we get all set up, we want to go ahead and shut down, clone the machine, and set up the other boxes. 
as you can see the third part of the install device is done etc is done the locations of sets are done and let me just go ahead and uh, hit enter it's going to be us central and it's actually going to be making all device nodes it's going to be relinking our own kernel in this install kind of ways OpenBSD doesn't pick up your domain when you you connect it to the internet because if you do and connect it to the internet it automatically picks a domain for you and and it puts it um i kind of like the feature when i can have control on what i want to set up regardless if i'm connected to the internet but you can always do like this do the installation in uh non-internet connected it wouldn't know the domain you can put whatever domain you want and go from there but uh, anyway that's just preferred preference still you can do install and um I just noticed when some installation of OpenBSD is actually connected to the internet, it forces you in that. So that's about it. Uh, it's going to ask us to reboot. I want to put just halt. And the reason for that is because I need to dismount the CD ROM. Otherwise, it's going to start booting in the same installation part that we were, and we don't want to do that. So with that, we can actually power off the machine. We can go back to OpenBSD, uh, take a look to the settings uh, right now and remove the installation media and then we can actually boot it and with the boot um, we can actually go ahead and see what is looking or installation now um, picture this this video is probably taking a little longer than expected this part was installation of OpenBSD so this first 11 minutes they're really so it's a bonus, but I wanted to make sure that you guys see everything from scratch, everything from the beginning. So this just shows how we're staging everything. So that way, if you choose to do some project similar, don't have any parts missing or assumptions that something needed to be done, right? You can see everything from scratch. Just feel free to jump on the video. Just basic installation. We're about to configure the first spine, and from there, we start cloning all the devices. As we go, this is the regular standard, regular boot of OpenBSD. We can log in as root. And let's go ahead and um, it's called S1. That's correct. It's called S1 localhost because localhost we choose as a domain. Let's take a look to the if config. We can see there's no um, loopback address. So let's create one. Uh, we can just do if config uh, local one as one dot one dot one dot one, which is my uh, is my spine one. Two fifty five, two fifty five, two fifty five, two fifty five. That's a slash thirty two. And also to make the changes forever, copy uh, host name. Let's say m zero to host name uh, local one. Then be a host name, a local one, and this is going to be respectfully changing to one, the one, the one, the one. It's going to be a full 32. Good. Right now, if we config, we have a local loopback address, as you can see, and we can ping. No, it's not a um, Cloudflare. It's it's our local loopback. <laughs> okay, so the next step is going to be we're going to copy from the etc examples syscontroller to etc. We're going to vi syscontroller. Um, and from here, we need to enable the first three lines, which is going to be the routing. And we can enable, force you to enable right now a syscontroller net.inet.ip.forwarding equals zero. It's almost like an, on the fly on the kernel. But actually, with the changes we did on the etc syscontrol, syscontroller.conf, it will be enabled in the next boot. That's fine. And likewise, when I do copy etc examples, bgpd.conf on etc is there. Uh, let's take a look on bgp.conf. Of course, the ESN number, that's fine. 6509 is the same thing we used in the previous video. We're going to use the router ID or loopback address, which is 1.1.1.1. Uh, of course, in this one, we need to change respectfully my networks. And in this case, 
you can definitely change to whatever is your IP address. Uh, you can just put additional IP subnets or whatever is connected, right? Um, uh, we continue right here. We're going to leave that alone. We're going to see... This is part of the part is talking about IVGP. We're not using IVGP. We're using EVGP, just like example. That's what we're trying to do. If you choose to do it, you can use IVGP or OSPF. You can actually configure. For now, I'm going to comment that part. I'm not going to be fooling around with that. Uh, my neighbors. Um, I need to set up my neighbors. And my neighbors want to be respectfully the correspondent with my connection to my loopback addresses, right? So, in that case, my neighbor is going to be 192.168.11.2 because it's my P, right? It's in the other end. Uh, remote as this is 65.0.10. And let's call it leaf1. I want to put the same IP so it be explanatory. 11.2. Now, likewise, with this one, we're going to have another neighbor which is going to be on the 12 that 2 for leaf 2 uh, that's going to be on 65020 AS number and this is going to be 12 and the neighbor is going to be on 13 1, 3, 1, 2, 3. Uh, this is going to be the 65030 leaf 3 and it's going to be 13 that would define <clears throat> the three BGP neighbors on the ones that's going to be part of the leaves and the connection. Uh, I should be able to allow it to connect and distribute my default route. And also, I should be able to to any okay because we want to allow prefixes from but then we need to allow distribute the networks here so actually that'll be a good uh, change <coughs> IBGP we're not playing with IBGP and here we have something that actually give me a little grief why is showing the prefixes only to 24. This should be 32 because we're announcing loopback addresses. That should be a change. It should be added. And the other part, this part, we don't need to deny on 65 because we're just not internal network. With those changes, just about those changes, we should be able to do um, RC controller enable PGPD, RC controller start pgpd bgp controller show summary bgp controller show rip okay we're advertising our route or prefix list is actually ready here and uh, i think that's about all she wrote right here so we can actually shut down this part it's probably going to need to be revealed in two videos, videos one and two. It's taking a little bit too long, but let me go ahead and uh, shut down for now. And uh, I want to go ahead and as soon as this is started, I want to clone this one. I want to make the first leaf. And with the first leave, I should be able to get adjacency. We can clone the spine. Should we do the spine? Should we do the leave? Question of the million. All right. So let me go ahead and do clone. I'm going to do, let's do my spine too. Just to be, and we need to make sure we generate new MAC addresses. 
otherwise this is not going to work. And with the new MAC addresses, it's going to start cloning uh, the second uh, machine. So I'm going to get ready the second machine. I wish it would be as fast, maybe some things like virtualization, be able to actually build it and, and you know, just kind of build it faster. But uh, this is a demonstration on how it will be like in real mode if you want to go ahead and get your physical appliances and get your routers. The installations will be pretty similar, more than actually just simulating on, a, on software. Um, pretty cool. Once it's working, it's, instead of have one Porsche running trips to get your packets, you get like five Toyotas and yeah, it, if the Porsche fails, the Toyotas or one of the Toyotas fails, it will continue working, right? Packets will continue flowing, your network will continue working uh, regardless of uh, the outage on one guy, the other ones will do the work. So let's go ahead and get ready for the spine two. Uh, in this case, when I start with a, let me go back here. Let's go in order here. Let's go ahead and uh, be me my name. It's going it's to be S2, Spine2, be a host. Of course, going to be respectfully Spine2 as well. Uh, let's uh, do if config local one as two dot two dot two dot two net mask. 255, 255, 255, 255. We have one. Uh, let's uh, copy hostname EM0 to hostname local one. Let's VI on hostname local one and edit the two. To a two and a full F, full 255. That should be it. Let's um, <clears throat> let's assist uh, controller net init.ip that forwarding equal one. I'll copy this example syscontroller to etc via the syscontroller get it done. Um, copy these examples, bgp.com, etc, vvgp.com. This is 6502, it's my eBGP. My IP is going to be 2, no IPv6, my bug ons, that's fine. Uh, IVGP, I'm not really doing IVGP. Just about the same thing we did earlier. Here we go. With neighbor, now we have a neighbor. And our neighbors are going to be, respectfully, the neighbors that actually belong for S2. So, it's going to be the 192, the 168, that uh, 21.2, that that's going to be the neighbor, and 65.10 is going to be spine 1, 192.168.21.2. With this 4, I need to copy to the other one's 22.2, with ISP 20. 22.2 and the last one, the last but not least, is going to be 23 that 3. 23.2, sorry, it's my neighbor. The trees are broadcast. <laughs> yeah, that won't be able to work. All right, so we got that. And yes, we want to allow prefixes on that. Uh, 
allow to any uh, deny prefixes allow from my VGP no I don't want to allow to my VGP and the sections on this this is actually the one mentioned it has to be 32 I don't know this is weird I don't know how was that like that another one that kind of throw me maybe because they trying to avoid somebody do something goofy on the internet like the IPs that should be it um, so uh, it's time to change the IPs so EM0 this is actually going to be 21, that one, EM1 is going to be 22, that one, and the last one is going to be 23, that one. So right now, if I do twenty-one, twenty-two, twenty-three, that's the IPs to do. That looks good. I think we're good here. Uh, we can actually shut down this one. On the next boot, it will change the IPs. And then I can go back here and I can do another clone on this one. I want to clone for my first leaf. I want to create new MAC addresses. So on leaf one, I can go ahead and this one I can actually go there and shoot them off. Let me go to this part. Leave one. <coughs> I started. And I guess I can use the magic of the video, just kind of do repeating the same process, but uh, you're catching the whole experience. I can probably split out in two videos, and then once we have the two videos, we we can actually um, move it forward. I have uh, six devices, so eventually can do three and three, and the demonstration at the end. I guess that, that could work, probably. Um, that would be one way of doing it, just without avoiding taking too long here anyway so I'm here I need to prestage the leaf one so in this case the IP addresses would change so let's go ahead and uh, let's take a look here of course right now it shows um, <clears throat> the previous one so if I do the V the host name local one this to be the three, the three, the three, the three. This is gonna be on the leaf gonna be eleven dot two. Twenty one dot two. And one eleven that one. Great. Now let's go back here. We need to change leaf one. leave one and then we have the if config ls host xargs cat grip init 
So we got the right IPs, the right 11, 21, 2, and 111. Let's do the routing. Uh, copy ETC examples, sys controller to ETC, vsys controller. Conf, let's enable routing on the next boot. Let's copy ETC examples, BGP, ITC. This is going to be the 1 0. And my loopback is 3.3.3.3. Of course, I'm advertising in BGP 3.3.3.3. Your subnet might be slash 24 or something else. This is just something else <coughs> here. IVGP, no, we're not playing nice with IVGP right now. That might be subject for another video if you want to do IVGP or OSPF. I'm thinking about OSPF, maybe I do some OSP OSPF. That'd be kind of cool. So my neighbor here, based on my IP addressing on my leaf, is going to be um, 192.168.11.1. That's my neighbor. That's 6501, spine 1, 168.11.1, because I'm 12. Now my neighbor 2, It'll be 21. This is from the AS6502, spine 2. And my third leg from this guy, it needs to be to 111.2. She's going to be the 8888. Internet 1. And it's going to be on 111.1. Okay. And 111.2, I'm sorry. Description. That's going to be it. In my rules, yes, I need to allow this. Hello to any. And again, check on the manual, the, the descriptions. This is just a little sample here. And with all that said here, we have this allow. And this part. Thirty-two. Okay. Here we go. Excellent. So back to here. We really need to RCS. We have enabled VGP, VGP controller, reload, VGPD. So summary, no connection, so put everything's down. VGP controller. Uh, <coughs> It's going to be a uh, show reef. So for now, we're only advertising. Uh, let's show down and see if we actually this work. We can actually spawn off the two spine, the two leaves. We're about to reach about 30 minutes. Uh, I didn't expect it to be this long, but we took some time. We start from scratch. We might make it two videos, but I, I want to put all three and see if actually there's some neighborship and uh, with three devices, and we have the other three for the other clones for the other video and the demonstration of the resilience on the spine leaf with a real open BSD. So with all that said, let me go ahead and get start this. Let me start the next spine. And the third one should be able to take the connectivity. So 
the spines. I want to go ahead and uh, let it running at the top. Um, I'll put a little bit here on the right. I can probably save some of the real estate. Uh, just make the screen a little smaller, real size 100%. That'd probably be a good idea. Now that you guys saw the settings, uh, everything should be pretty straightforward. No, no magic, no mystery, no voodoo magic there, no nothing. It's just everything just works. And the last part, the leaf, uh, that one I want to show open because we might do some changes here. So, um, let's take a look to the spine. Should be able to boot now. Root, my super password. PGP controller shows summary. And it's actively trying to connect to one. That's good. It doesn't mean it's active. It's just actively trying to connect. That's BGP. It's connected. How about that? Uh, show Reef. Nice. Have connectivity to 3.3.3. Yeah. Because we have a... Uh, BGP summary, we have adjacency. I wouldn't be surprised if one is actually working as well now. So here, look at that. Yeah, it come off. Nice. And if we shoot the rip, we're getting the routes for one and three. That's pretty cool. So potentially, uh, we should be able to go ahead and Let's see what it looks on leaf. So summary, I see the two neighbors. Of course, I have connectivity. There you go. So, BGP controller show reef. What is my information that I'm getting? <coughs> I'm getting the routes <coughs> from this fox. Three, 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 three. I'm not advertising SCB BGP. Oh, <coughs> then I, <coughs> I miss this part here. 64 and uh, yeah nice now I can see you can see actually I'm getting all the routes now let's take a look here I don't think should be really missing here now we see all the routes I can actually even be in the spine I don't seem to have direct connectivity however I can do the extended ping just like Cisco do the sourcing I can do my source one dot one dot one dot one and eventually can do my destination two dot two dot two dot two and I can reply I got connectivity right likewise in the other end at the other end on VGP you might not be able to see the reef, I can see the one if I do ping that one, the one, the one. It doesn't know the fate of the sourcing of the ping, but I can do with it. Does that help? You see it actually source address. We can actually use a source address just like Cisco. And I can do ping dash I. My lo local loopback is 2.2.2. I want to reach one, the one, the one. And I have successful connectivity. Uh, more importantly, uh, BGP controller shows summary. I can see my neighbors. My network is built to the leaf, and then I can see my. I can see uh, my my routing table as well. So this is pretty cool. Uh, it's working well. It's working really, really well. So at this point, I guess we can do a little stretch here on the video. Just don't want to come up short. What I want to do is on the leaf. I want to create a. Let me 
me just check something real quick. What is this actually putting? Let me just show. Uh, yeah, this was commented. So why I missed that one and the other one? It's kind of weird. I thought the BI was coming, so. Yeah, it's commented, so weird. Okay. Maybe at the time of the clone or something. I don't know. Uh, I want to use this one to build the internet node, which is going to be 8.8.8.8. So bear with me. Well, I can just clone and make this one delay. I guess I can clone them all. Underscore. Um, clone. Leave two. We can go faster. Generate new MAC addresses. And later I can use this one as a template to clone. I want to make it a leave two. Of course, you would do probably real style, right? New MAC addresses and leave two. Actually, it's going to be leave three, sorry. Leave three. And ultimately, I can take it to do a clone. And I want to do an internet one. I learned actually uh, OpenVZ has the CARP for failover. That's pretty cool. That might be subject for another topic. I guess I, I want to go on, go into crazy here. But uh, in this case, uh, I can just put this one up again. Uh, oh, no, 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 no. I don't need to put that one. I don't need to put that one. I need to actually finish the other setting. Otherwise, they want to overlap. <coughs> I don't need to do this. Not yet. Okay. Let me fix this one, which will be the overlap. I need to fix them all, really. <clears throat> but anyway. Let's start with number eight. Uh, I'm going to start with number eight. As you can see, the operating system is super fast, super friendly. Once you get a couple of things, yeah, it's, it gets a little, gets a little, it's a little hairy in a couple of little things. But once you get it, get a hold of how everything's working, everything's super cool, super nice. Um, you just have to, you know, evolve eventually from uh, some Linux operating systems. VSD is is, is pretty cool. Once you get a overpass the the hump is super powerful and it can really really bring a lot of things. I've seen amazing videos on the internet, some folks doing some things. So anyway, that's what I wanted to contribute on this one. So anyway, um so right now uh I wanna do hostname local one. It's gonna be eight that day that day that eight. Um, let's do EM0, which is going to be 111.2. Let's do VIEM1, which is going to be 121.2. Let's do EM2, which is going to be 131.2. deal as far as our IPs goes now let's go ahead and fix the host name this is internet one internet one um, let's do the I guess we address that one address the host right Arcs, cat, grep, init. Here we go. When 11, 121, and idea yeah, we got addresses. We just need to reboot probably. I copy these examples. This controller. No, no, probably we have to reboot, but or, or just start the services either. But um, via this controller, let's enable routing. Three lines. Let's copy these examples. <coughs> OSPF, no, I'm sorry, BGPD, etc. Let's go to the BGPD 
Uh, now, actually, I had it before. I probably can just edit it, but anyway, that's probably that's what I missed. It. I copy. I could just edit it because I have it already. I need to copy that one, but anyway, either or, no, not a problem. This is gonna be. Okay, uh, we got IVGP, I don't want IVGP. Upstream providers, yeah, that's what happens. I shouldn't really be editing twice. I can just edit it, but anyway, I can uh, slow the process. It was just part of my recipe, but anyway, that's fine. Um, just to do, make sure I get it right. What's gonna look like in my neighbors? Gonna be 192, 168, 111, um, leave one, 121.1. Here we go. And one thirty one dot one. Leave three. Leave two. And this is one thirty one dot one. Here we go. We got all that. Yes, I want to load from prefixes. IVGP, I don't want IVGP. And we continue here. Oh, this one. All right, I think so she growed right here. Oh, no, no, I need, uh, that's the part I was actually missing that, yeah. I didn't want enough because actually it was already set up. That's fine. So, with all that said, we have the host name, we have the IPs, we got everything we need. I think I can probably start, but I need to edit the other two so it won't it won't it won't affect us. So geez, 47. Let me go ahead and just buy the bullet and go for that. So I'm gonna shut down this guy. I wanna go ahead and so spine spine leave to get it going. I'll go ahead and edit it, edit the settings. I'm not going to override that file. Not this time. See if we can get a little faster, pick up some speed. And with that, we should be able to change us the 3.3.3 by 4 or 4 or 4, respectfully, and lay leave 3 with 5 or 5 or 5. Some of the IPs should be in place. We shouldn't be able, now that we know that the JCCs are there, we shouldn't have to have too much trouble. Uh, it's almost getting there, but uh, I think it's worth it because with that it's going to be super high five routers in OpenBSD that can be actually added in a real hardware all together. Spine leaf running OSPF giving a highly resilient network. Now the idea on this one is everything's going to be routing. Always going to be an IP av available, yes or yes. So that's pretty cool. And the capacity you define it right depends on your hardware so let me go ahead and make sure that uh be a host name local one this is going to be 4.4.4.4 host name em0 and the ip address for the leaf 2 is going to be 12.2 And EMG1 is going to be 22.2. And EMD2 is going to be 121.1. Nice. So that's as far as the IPs. Let's see if we can make it easier and faster without shooting us in the foot. Let me go back here. This is leaf 2.
Okay. Um, we have enable routing. I guess we can just do VVGP. This is the one actually I kind of uh, kind of dropped the ball here. I could just edit the one we have it. It's 20. Of course, this changes from the previous one, 333 to 4.4.4.4. Likewise here. And then um, here, my upstreams is going to be different ones, of course. Let me just go ahead and make sure I got it right. Um, my neighbor is going to be from the leaf two is going to be 12. That one. That'll be for the spine. That's going to be 22, that one. And ultimately, it's going to be 121. That one. Yeah. Actually, that's going to be one twenty one dot two. Maybe the remote, right? My BGP is AP of the remote. I'm 12.1 as my neighbor. My local IP is 12.2. 22.2, and this is 121.1. I have to pay in with 121.2. Good, 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 good. That's fine. And I allow prefix, I allow 20. Everything's good. My last part on 32 is fine. And the subnet is fine. This is good. This is done. And now we can just do the last one, open BSD3. Jeez, I can't believe it took so long. But it's turning a really nice video. For <clears throat> for what is worth it, whoever look at it, you can see the whole thing from the beginning. Install open BSD, stage a multi VLAN in VirtualBox with in a internal network setup and with that set up the respective IPs. Get in a spine leaf. What I want to just demonstrate a beautiful on the beauty of all this. I just need to finish set up this part. Um, so yes, uh, right here. Come on, come on, come on, come on. Sometimes I wish I could do the faster script and just get it going and <clears throat> but the magic would be gone, right? Oops, that's not Rudy root. So uh via host name local one, this is gonna be five. Of course it's gonna be thirteen that two. EMB1 is going to be <clears throat> 23 that, that 2 and EM2 is going to be 131 that 1 okay with those IPs out of the way and this is 65030 let's go back here and take a look to the host names Be my name. Say my name. Say my name. It's one. No, this is not this one. This is a spy. This is leaf three. Yeah, it's leaf trees. Leaf three. Okay, done. So now that we have leaf tree on the host, 
and we have the interfaces correct. We have this sys controller because it comes from the previous copy. Uh, we just can do VGP config. My AS number is on this is 0 30, and the IP change to 5. Five, 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 five is what I announced. That's my local library. Nothing else on this one can be added. Uh, we're not playing with IVGP. Is disable my neighbors. <coughs> here we go. I think in this one, let's go back here. Let's leave three. So it's going to be thirteen dot two. So it's going to be thirteen. My neighbor is 13, I'm 13 to 2, so actually be 13 to 1, 23 to 1. I'm pairing 31, I'm 23, 2, I'm pairing with me. Okay, that looks right. And last but not least, a lot to any, where are down and everything else, IVGP. We're actually checking here the higher ports, the 24, 32, and we're blocking the 64. This is perfect. Okay, so shutting down that one. I guess I can come back. Uh, I know it's way too long here in the video. I don't like to make videos that long. I like to make it those quicker, but I can actually start. Leave one. Can I start leave two? Can I start leaf three? And leaf four should be fine. Let's see. Did I uh, actually need a reboot? Yeah, I need a reboot. There we go. Showtime. Uh, everything is actually running. Looking at a. Uh, BGP controller show summary. I see three neighbors, which is great. It's advertising here, just the first one, BGP controller. I'll start getting addresses propagated here two connections and I'm getting addresses that's pretty awesome so VGP is aware of the VGP summary and the AS paths you can see the AS paths is actually following the respective paths that we set up so the network is working we have the connectivity um, if I come back here to go to, 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 to let's say leave one I have my neighborships I have all the routes from all the devices I can see uh, reachability on multiple networks the spines the ones the twos now notice something really cool the way and the nature of spine leaf we have multiple paths and right here is showing 
M as a multipath, just like Cisco devices, between the leaf and the spine. That means the redundancy is built because BGP. And I can actually show uh, the same thing is consistent all across the border. So why stay with one link if you can have So summary is my neighbors and I can see the multipath redundancy build within the consistency. Now you were wondering, I'm on leaf two. Uh, can leaf two ping the three the three the three? He might say no. But what if we source it? Like we did earlier. Then we have connectivity. Beautiful. So, just like a router, it's behaving exactly like a router. Uh, what it looks like, what it looks like from the um, perspective of connectivity to 8.8.8.8. Trace route 8.8.8.8.8. I can see it's going to be reached via 11.2, and potentially the router one is going to be able to reach it ultimately. Let's do the other one. Uh, trace route. Eight, 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 eight. Should be able to find it. If we have the connectivity testing, the packets will flow. There he goes. Now let's create some disruption in the path because the path might not always be there. The path and always be there. We have some outages. We'll have some outages, and that be the beauty. That when when BGP will shine when actually shows that even though with some interfaces shut down, things are still working. So in this case, um, Everything seems to be working fine. Internet router can have connectivity to the main routers. Uh, let's create some disruption here. Let's actually go for the interface. This is a spine one. Let's create a let's shoot down the interfaces. There's no path coming up from here. Why not even uh, EM2? Reload BGPD. Let's do the show riff. We're we'll start showing no consistency here. We we shut down the interfaces on there. The connectivity. It start changing. Now reachability to some hosts is not going to be actually all the redundancy and then he has to respectfully add and show that the connectivity is going to take some synchronization on BGP. Just remember BGP is not the fastest protocol on the internet. So
Um, here we go. He just come back. <clears throat> you see that? He sync. The route table sync, and things start working. It's just because it takes about 90 seconds on the synchronization. Um, Now it's looking for the 12.2. It's not going for the 101, now it's going for the 12. And it's going for the 22.2. See different paths on these ones. So what will happen if at some point I shoot down my third link or my leave 2? Let's create another disruption on the leave 2 now. Leave 2 goes down. Right. So now let's show how the connectivity looks. When BGP synchronizes from the eight internet, leaf three is actually happy. It doesn't show the multipath anymore in some cases because we're losing some links. BGP is reflecting that, which is really cool. Um, my neighborship is still established. It's like eight minutes since it's been established. That's pretty cool. And continue to provide, provide resilience to the network. I have the pin going right here. <clears throat> and the only thing is actually synchronizing. Here we go. You just come back up. BGP synchronizes start working. Look at that. And if I do right here a trace route, you can see it's actually using the one three, the last leaf, two three and one three. That's pretty cool. The last leaf is actually working. Potentially it can be crisscross or something, but uh, it's not as trivial to eventually identify how things are working, but uh, you can appreciate it, how things are actually working, how things can actually be showing resilience. And as you can see, if everything's working good, I can go back here and do the opposite. So if config em0 up, if config em1 up, if config em2 up and potentially go back here and same thing is if config em0 up if config em1 up if config em2 up show reef from my leaf and multi multi adjacency is going to start building it's going to bring more resilience eventually bgp controller show uh rip you can see start building the multi paths come back come back together uh the connectivity never goes away super cool super cool super resilient pretty amazing technology spinal leaf anyway that's all I wanted to show. I know it took so long, but I appreciate it, guys. Hopefully you enjoyed. Enjoy networking, technology, open BSD, open source. Cheers. Talk to you later in this video.